Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Welcome to St. Mary's Catholic Church in Richmond, Virginia. You have joined us as we celebrate the Eucharist for the fourth Sunday of Easter. And we are blessed that you are praying with us today. We thank all of you who have submitted prayer intention requests to the parish through our webpage. A little later in this Mass, as we stand at the altar, you will see a glass bowl filled with uh, pieces of paper in it. On those pieces of paper are printed all of the prayer intentions that we have received since the middle of March. So all of your prayer requests are are remembered in this Mass today. And if you haven't yet had a chance to send in your requests, please go to our parish webpage and you will find an easy way to submit those intentions to us. We also want to thank all of you who have so generously supported the ministries of this parish during this time of quarantine. You have been remarkably generous, and that enables us to be generous to our neighbors who are struggling during this difficult time. At the usual place in the Mass where we take our collection, information will appear on your screen giving you the opportunity to participate in the collection and the support of the parish today. And we thank you for your generosity. And now, let us stand and join our voices in our opening song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us open our hearts to the mercy of Christ. Lord Jesus, you are risen in glory. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you send us your Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is 
is good, God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die but live anew, declaring the works of the This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all of his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of the stranger. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate 
for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and I will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I came around the bend in the road, and it looked like my entire neighborhood had decided to come outside at the very same time. Kids of every age were riding their bicycles in the road. Children were drawing hopscotch lines on driveways. Parents were sitting in lawn chairs in the street and on lawns. It was a beautiful Friday afternoon just a couple of days ago, and I think my whole neighborhood had grown weary of quarantine and homeschooling. So the kids were riding and running and yelling while moms and dads were drinking and drinking. So I drove carefully through this impromptu block party. And after I parked my car, I said hello to some of the neighbors, and I noticed how our neighborhood sounded so so alive that Friday afternoon. Music was playing from somewhere. Adults and teens were laughing. Kids were laughing and screaming. At any given moment, 12 or 13 children from the neighborhood were all yelling or talking at the same time. And I noticed something else. Even though dozens of kids were screaming and laughing at the same time, and and even though their moms were chatting and sipping Chardonnay, each of those moms in the neighborhood has a unique skill, and it's this. If their child yelled out, Mom, somehow they could hear their child's voice through the chorus of other children's voices. If one child sounded distressed, their mom could tell the difference. They could hear the difference between their own child's voice and every other young voice in the neighborhood and she would turn her head and look. Now, I have noticed that talent in moms and dads before. This most recent experience was the one that I remember most clearly now. And it seems to me that from the moment of birth, the moment a child is born, a mom or dad listens to their child's voice. You learn every nuance. Moms can tell if their child is sad or happy or frightened. You can tell from their voice whether they are lying to you or telling you the truth. And even when dozens of kids from the neighborhood are yelling at the same time on a sunny afternoon, you can pick your child's voice out of the crowd because you have been lovingly listening to that voice for years. Today, Jesus speaks to us in John's Gospel, and he tells us that if we are going to be his disciples, part of his flock, if you will, then we must lovingly learn to listen to his voice. We need to practice our listening 
so that we will come to know what his voice sounds like among all the others. We cannot just try to listen to Jesus on occasion or in an emergency. We've got to spend time every day attuning our ears to the authentic voice of the true shepherd, the one whom we love, the good shepherd who leads us to life. Jesus says in today's gospel, my sheep follow me because they recognize my voice. And then Jesus also says that that they won't follow a stranger because they don't recognize the stranger's voice. This beautiful statement, actually these beautiful statements from Jesus, happen in the 10th chapter of John's Gospel. But just before this, in the 9th chapter, there's another famous scene in John's Gospel. Jesus heals the man who was born blind in chapter 9. You remember that story. The man has never seen a thing. He's been blind his whole life. And then Jesus heals him. And the man is thrilled. And his parents are are mystified. And the neighbors are wide-eyed with wonder. And the religious leaders are worried. And ultimately, those religious leaders throw this man out of the synagogue. Think about that. In chapter 9, this guy gets his sight restored for the first time in his life, and in response, the same day, he gets excluded from his faith community. The religious leaders in chapter 9 are driving away folks who have put their faith in Jesus. And then immediately after that, in chapter 10, Jesus uses these beautiful images of inclusion, welcome, and safety. The shepherd of the sheep is here, and he calls each of the sheep by name, and they follow him. Jesus says, I am the gate. So if you enter through me, you will be saved and you will find restful pastures. Jesus says, I have come that you might have life, life abundantly. Do you see the contrast? In chapter 9, we hear about religious leaders whose misunderstanding of God's love leads them to constantly draw lines and drive people out and and exclude people from the community of God's beloved people. But then in chapter 10, we see Jesus once again speaking of himself as the shepherd, the one who shepherds, the one who includes and welcomes the living and protecting one in whom we live abundantly. And it's in this context of good shepherding images that Jesus says, the sheep follow the authentic shepherd because they recognize his voice. And they run away from the stranger because they don't recognize his voice. Today, I I think that statement by Jesus raises two questions that we could ponder in the week ahead. Question one, how can we learn to listen to the voice of Jesus? Let's start here, actually. How much time have you spent this past week, this past month, this quarantine, trying to listen to the voice of the risen Christ. The mom in my neighborhood really listens for her child's voice. The sheep in the gospel recognize the shepherd's voice because they spend time each day listening for that voice. And that voice leads them to safety, to shelter, to nourishment. They've learned what the voice sounds like. How much time are you spending listening for the voice of Jesus? How are you listening 
And how are you learning what the voice of Jesus sounds like? Fortunately, we are part of a Christian tradition which provides some trustworthy ways that will help us, that will help us listen well to the voice of Jesus. These trustworthy practices help us to learn what the voice of the shepherd sounds like. What does our tradition teach us? Well, our tradition teaches us to be silent for a while, every day. In that silence, we can shut out some of the clamoring noise of our lives and begin to listen to the still, quiet voice of the Lord. So our tradition tells us that if we want to listen to the voice of the shepherd, we have to be quiet for a little bit every day. And Christian experience tells us that we can listen to the voice of Jesus by reading and praying the scriptures, the Bible. Do you want to know how Jesus speaks? Read the Gospels. That's a great place to start. If you want to know what his voice sounds like now, well, become familiar with what his voice sounded like in the vibrant narratives of the Gospel. And our tradition tells us that we hear the voice of Jesus in the teachings of our church. We hear echoes of his voice in the lives of people whose holiness inspires us, in saints and great spiritual writers, in artists and musicians. Jesus speaks through the people that we love, through the promptings of our conscience, and in the voice of the poor and the hungry. I need to practice my listening. And in the practicing of the listening, I'm going to learn more and more what his voice sounds like. The only way to recognize the voice of Jesus in our crisis times is to practice listening to Jesus in our ordinary times. Which brings me to my second question for the coming week. Is there some common theme? Is there some unique accent in the voice of Jesus which can help us recognize his authentic voice when he speaks? Actually, I think there are several. Have you noticed as you've read the Gospels or listened to the Gospels over the years, have you noticed how Jesus keeps talking about certain themes? like forgiveness, love, mercy. Have you noticed that he keeps talking about sacrifice and self-giving, faithfulness and truth-telling? And he keeps talking about life. He said it again in today's gospel, Jesus says, the thief comes to steal and to slaughter, but I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. When Jesus speaks to you and to me, he always speaks a message that leads to abundant life, eternal life. So if the voice you hear leads you to embrace and treasure the life that God creates, then chances are you're hearing the voice of Jesus. If the voice you hear in the silence and in your scripture reading and in your prayer speaks to you of forgiveness, of truth-telling, of faithfulness and self-giving, then chances are you're listening to the voice of Jesus. But Jesus warns us in today's gospel to ignore the voices of the ones he calls the thieves. The thieves, the lying voices, which glamorize death and demean the dignity of human life. They destroy human dignity and trivialize relationships and faithfulness. Don't listen to those voices. Jesus calls himself the shepherd in today's gospel. In doing so, he invites us to listen and to follow. He will lead us to abundant life. He will speak to your heart. 
and he will always tell you, I love you. Isn't that the voice we need to hear now more than ever? There are so many screaming, scary, angry voices swirling around us these days. Even so, there is a voice which can pierce right through the clamor. The voice can still be heard if we will learn how to listen to it. It's never too late to start listening. It's never too late to learn what his voice sounds like. Listen to him. He's already listening to you. Let us now stand. Inspired by the Spirit, together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the presence of the risen Lord, we make known our prayers and petitions. For the church, that we may allow Christ to bring forth abundant life within us, let us pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work to restore life and bring healing, for medical personnel, for counselors, and for chaplains, that God will guide them as they journey with those in pain and preserve them from harm, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are awaiting the sacraments of initiation, especially the elect of our parish, our confirmation candidates, and our young people preparing for First Communion, that God will sustain them and deepen their commitment and guide them in their desire to serve God each day. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer for healing in mind, body, and spirit, most especially during this time of pandemic, that Christ will restore to wholeness all who are suffering. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Give comfort and peace to all who struggle with illness of body or spirit, for all who are remembered in the prayers of our community and for those we name aloud. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and those who mourn their loss, for Gabe Henderson, Mary Hannafin, Leonard Tusky, and Barbara Thornton, who are remembered at this liturgy. For these intentions, 
and for all we hold in our hearts and for the salvation of all God's people. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We make all these prayers in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, this holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to all the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his, rise, in, in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. And together with Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Are you Peccata mundi, miserere nobis, agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Christ the Lord is risen to